All right, guys, let's get started. How are we doing this morning? How was call session this morning? How many appointments we get? Okay. Eight. Who booked an appointment? Raise your hand if you booked an appointment. Solid. Who had some really, really good calls? Maybe you didn't book an appointment, but really, really solid calls. Good stuff. Who uh, didn't do either? Who didn't book an appointment, didn't have any good calls at all? Yeah, you raised your hand for all three, bro. What's up? All right, good job, though. I hear you guys calling. It's Thursday, guys, right? So Thursday, as we get to the end of the week, we start getting a little more tired. We've been here since Monday making calls and everything, so we got to pick up that energy on a Thursday and try to just keep it going, right? Four solid days a week of prospecting is really going to make your business happen um, and it's going to set your weekends up as well, right, for you guys to go out there and, and close some deals. But today, what I'm going to be going over is – it's going to be how to use stats and how to use different tools that we have online to get your buyers and clients to move forward. Um, one of the big problems that we're running into, or one of the challenges, I guess, that we're running into with the competitive market is that buyers could be on the fence when it's time to make offers. Would you guys agree? You're calling, there's 20 offers on the property or 10 offers or whatever it might be. The home's going this much over asking. If you even get that far where you submit an offer and now you're in the running with counter offers, a lot of times you're getting countered back to come up in price, right? And that's where that conversation, you know, where the buyer starts to like really fill it. They start filling the squeeze of the market, right? Like, well, I thought I already gave a good offer. Now they want 30 grand more. Now they want 50 grand more. Now they want me to do this. And so the, the skill that you need to develop is you need to be able to understand where they're coming from, but then you need to take them from feeling emotional about it to now looking at how to make this decision based off facts, based off logic, based off return on investment for this property. And not just like, Hey, I'm scared because it's markets going crazy. Right. Because clients immediately are going to get sticker shock. A lot of times when it's time to make offers and the prices are going up, they get that feeling like, Whoa, I don't know if I can afford this. I don't know if I can do this. This is becoming real now. Right. And that's that's the hard part. Um, so what we're going to go over today is how to use a couple like really simple tools that are really powerful um, and equip you guys with the knowledge and the know how to give the clients this information. Right. Um, I know, Dan, uh, was it like two weeks ago you had shared that you had a client that was on the fence. They got a counter for what, 30 grand more on the property and they didn't want to go up. Right. So let's just unpack that a little bit. Walk me through what was the conversation like? What were their feelings? What was the reasoning of, of them not wanting to go up? Well, they were really excited about it. Okay. They were actually the home that they were thinking about. Okay. The area, you could keep the block to work. They just want to go and check all the boxes. There. Okay. Uh, Monty and I were in contact with the listing agent. She was a woman of very few words. <laughs> okay. So not a lot from the listing agent. Yes. Yeah. That's all we got. 
And we're trying to squeeze everything out of her. We're trying to put all the bad shit in her. So we ran comp. We came in at a really good number, right? Uh, we came in at one four seven zero, and then she got back to us and said that we need to go thirty k high. Mm. And then our buyers backed out. Okay. So when you say your buyers backed out, right? So you you submit the offer. They really love the property. You got countered for 30 grand more and your buyer said, I don't want to do it. What was the conversation like with your buyer at that point? Um, initially, Blanca tried to get him at 1.5 initially. Okay. He wanted to start off at 1.450. Okay. And then we, we got countered and then we came in at 1.470 and he said, that's the most we can do. Okay. And then got countered again, 30, 30 K higher. And then after that, it was too much back and forth, I think, for my buyer. Yeah. And they didn't want to go through with it anymore. Right. I think uh, she thought that the most amazing was kind of putting my leg a little bit. Okay. And did the property end up go, going in contract with somebody else? And did it close already? Do you know? Okay. So your client, basically, you went back and forth a couple times on price. And then at that point, your buyer just kind of threw in the towel. Right. Okay. So. What I'm going to show is your buyer currently renting right now, or what's their situation? Yeah, they're renting. Uh, they're going month to month right now. They're just, we're on it, but once we find that perfect home, they're, now that they know the sense of urgency and how this market is going, especially in Mountain View and Sunnyvale, mm -hmm. we need to act fast. Got it. Now, do you know how much they, they pay for rent? Uh, I think they're like at $3,500 right now. $3,500 in rent? Yeah. And then the price of the home that they're looking at is what? 1.5 million roughly. How much down payment are they putting? 20% down. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you guys right now is, is this calculator in our Chicago Agent One app. So uh, Chicago Title is, is who we work with. Um, there's an app, you can do this online or you can actually do this on your phone as well. So if you guys have the app on your phone, you guys can either play along with me, but let me show you how it's done first. And then you guys can, we'll take some time to maybe put it into action with you guys. So when you log into Chicago Title, there's this little button right here that says calculators, this little tab here. So when you click on calculators, there's a bunch of really good calculators that kind of go through different scenarios for you. And so the one that is really, really good is going to be rent versus buy. So when you click on rent versus buy right here, it's going to pull up this calculator. And we're just going to run through Dan's scenario. We'll run through a live scenario. So in this situation, they're currently paying 3500 bucks in rent. Um, now, 3500 bucks in rent, do you know what they're renting right now? Is that it's an, apartment. an apartment? That's all I know. Okay. Uh, so if they were to go rent a house like they're trying to buy, right? I'm assuming they wanted to get out of the apartment, get something bigger, get an actual house that they can live in. Um, and they're looking in what, Sunnyvale Mountain View for $1.5 If they were to go rent a house like the one that they bid it on, do you know what that would be? At least five grand a month. Okay. So we'll plug in the two scenarios. Let's go like, let's just go comparing staying in an apartment, which is not really apples to apples, right? But we'll just use the scenario 3,500 and then we'll plug in the 5,000 and see what that does. So you plug in 3,500, what they're currently renting, and we're going to plug in 1.5 million, which is around the ballpark of the home they're looking to buy. This client is putting 20% down. So now we're going to go compute right here. Um, some assumptions, if you look at it, it goes over their interest rate, their term. This is just automatically populated. Do you know what rate they were getting quoted, roughly? Okay, so this has a 7.1. Maybe they were getting a, a different loan program. They're getting a 6.5. I'm going to put that right there. Um, and it goes over rent appreciation, home appreciation, home maintenance. Now, when we looked at... This is taking average appreciation of three and a half percent right now. But in Sunnyvale Mountain View, you're paying a premium for those areas because those properties go up a lot more. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to go to just Redfin, which is something I could pull up real quick. And I'm going to go to, let's say, Sunnyvale. And when I search for Sunnyvale. Right here on the right, I can click on Market Insight. And that's going to give me all just kind of a breakdown of the stats for Sunnyvale. 
So if we look at Sunnyvale housing market trends in January, 2024, home prices were up 24% compared to a year before. So from January of 2023 to January, 2024, the prices went up 24%, which is a lot. Um, average price is 1.9. On average homes in Sunnyvale sell for 16 days on market compared to 26 days last year. There were 35 homes sold in January this year. Now this is going all types of homes. If I just say, okay, I'm gonna specifically look at single family home. Were they looking at single family or townhouse? Townhome, okay. So I'm gonna go townhouses. Um, on townhouses, prices were down 7.8% year over year. Right, so in that situation, maybe we'll just stick with the, the average appreciation for that one, right? Now, if they're buying like a single family home, single family homes are 8.4% year over year. If I go to condos, 0.7%. Uh, if I go to all home types, 24%. So if this number was like really high, in this case, it went down, right? For townhouses, then we would just go with the average appreciation that it kind of gives you the three and a half percent. So I'm just gonna leave this here. Now, if that number like on average was like 10 or 12 or whatever, then I can plug that in there. But this is gonna give you like a really conservative look at the numbers there. So if I go to compute, Now, what this is gonna show me, guys, is gonna show me their break even point. So if I'm paying 3,500 bucks in rent right now and I'm buying a, comparing that to buying a $1.5 million home with 20% down, there's a cost for me renting, right? Every month I'm paying rent. Over the years, the rent goes up. I'm not able to write that off on my taxes, stuff like that. Versus if I were to buy a home um, I'm gaining equity in the property because it's going up, even if it's going up an average number. Um, I'm also get able to write off taxes on the property, property taxes and stuff like that. And so it's going to break those two numbers down. It's going to give us a break even point. Now, this client, are they planning to live there long term? What would you say? Like, this is going to be the home that they're going to stay in for the. Okay. So. Okay. So for them, and this is a question you have to ask to your client, right? Is how long do you realistically think you're gonna stay in this home? Because the break even point right here is gonna be 12 years and four months. Meaning in 12 years is when you break even for what you're paying in rent versus what you would pay in your mortgage, right? And that's going off $3,500 rent, which is not really a apples to apples. Now, if you were to go rent the same house, you're probably gonna pay 5,000 bucks a month, right? So I'm gonna plug that number in because that's really more realistic. And that's gonna be about an eight year break even point, right? So you can either move out of your apartment, go rent a house in that neighborhood, or you move out of your apartment, go buy a house in that neighborhood. In eight years is kind of the break even point. Now, if you decide to stay there, let's say you stay there 20 years. you're actually gonna gain, if you look at this number, 1.1 million by staying there and buying and appreciating, right? Getting the appreciation. If you're only there 15 years, you still gain 585,000, right? Which is still good. And then when you click on this little learn more tab, it's gonna pull up how they calculated everything. So for your clients that are like, well, hey, how are you coming up with those numbers? right? If they're real engineer types or um, want to know the numbers, the data, pull this up, right? And you're going to say, hey, look it, this is what you're going to bring to closing. This is your down payment and your closing cost. This is going to be the mortgage payments you're going to make over that time. This is going to be the maintenance on the property that you're going to make over that time. This is the total amount you've put out of your pocket over that time. Then you have your equity that you're gaining. Even if the property is only going up three and a half percent, right? on a very conservative basis, you pay down your principal, you appreciated 1.1 million in appreciation, and then you save 240 grand on taxes because you got to write off your property taxes. So your total equity and savings is 1.7 mil over that time period. And then so if you minus those two figures, what you paid out of pocket, what you gained from the equity, all that stuff, 
you're positive 577,000. Exactly, right? Now, three and a half percent, maybe last year, the townhouses didn't perform so well in those areas, right? But this number could be higher, right? In, in certain areas. If they buy a single family home, it's probably gonna appreciate more. When we looked at single families, um, single family homes appreciate more. This was 8.4% year over year. So this, I'm just gonna run different scenarios. So say I put 8% in there and I compute, your break even point is three years. Three years, three months makes a big difference, right? Single family homes are typically gonna appreciate more. So you could even tell them, hey, this could be a stepping stone for you. You buy this, maybe in five years, you move out, you refinance, pull some cash, you rent it out, it keeps going up for you, and then you buy a single family home, right? Now, if they live there for 15 years, 2.6 million is what they're gonna gain comparing the rent cost versus buy costs. So the point I'm trying to make guys is like, all of these numbers are gonna take you away from emotional decision. Oh man, this seems like a lot, 30 grand, like, oh, I can't keep going. Cause usually that's what it is, right? Like the back and forth, you said they felt like the listing agent was stringing them along or was trying to get them to come up. So you said it right there, they felt, right? And when you feel, that's a, then you're acting off emotion, right? I'm scared. I'm going to back off because I feel like I'm making a bad decision. Hey, let's take, let's, let's take that out of the picture. And that's what I would tell the client. Hey, let's take that out of the picture. Let's say she's stringing you along. Let's say she's not. Let's just take that off the table. Let's just look at, at this strictly from a return on investment standpoint. Let's compare what your current situation is or if you were to go rent a similar home versus if you were to buy a home. And let's really look at the numbers and see if it makes financial sense. Because we don't know. We don't know if maybe she did get multiple offers. Maybe that is what people are willing to pay, right? I know it feels that way because, you know, we're, it's, we're competing right now. But it's my job to help you make an educated decision. So let me show you the data and show you what that looks like, right? And so you want to take them out of feeling and go to the numbers. Because it really is, at the end of the day, it's an investment, right? It's all about the numbers. If I'm going to pay this much more uh, to buy a home and put my down payment, I want to know that my money is going to work for me and it's going to be worth it in the long run. So this is the way I'm speaking to you guys is how I'm going to, I would speak to the client, right? I would say, Hey, let's take away how we're feeling about the agent, right? Okay. Maybe she's not doing the best job of communicating. Maybe we don't know if she's doing her job and trying to push the price up, but let's look at it from a return on investment standpoint. Now, so you have different tabs right here that you can also present to them. And I would go through all four tabs. So number one is payment. This is where you're going to look at what's the monthly mortgage payment. And then what you save in taxes, because you get to write off property taxes. And if you click on learn more, it breaks it down. So based off this property, your total savings in taxes every, every year is going to be 10,600. Where right now, when you rent, you don't get to write off any taxes, right? So whatever you're paying minus what you're saving on taxes at the end of the year, that's really your net payment at the end of the day, right? So you're showing them that savings. We already went through the cost analysis. Now here's another one that's pretty cool is the equity analysis. So what's your total equity after 15 years if you bought a single family home in this case, total equity is gonna be 3.8 million. Your down payment was 300,000. Your appreciation was 3.2 million based off 8% a year, right? Your principal uh, that you've gained was 329,000. So your total equity position was 3.8 million on this property in 15 years. Okay, well, I'm only gonna keep the house for 10 years. Okay, well, let's, let's look at what 10 years does. Okay, and how's 2.2 million sound for you in 10 years, right? Okay, well, we're buying a townhouse, so it's only appreciating three and a half percent. Okay, let's be conservative and let's run those numbers. It's gonna look different, but if I go through equity in eight years, I got close to a million bucks in equity. You renting right now is not doing that for you, right? 
And so, Mr. Client, I know they're asking you for $30,000 more, right? But now we got to look at, is it worth it to invest that $30,000 into this home that you've told me you really like? It's in the area you want to be in. You can afford the payment, right? You have the down payment, all that stuff. You're going to pay an extra 30 grand to, to lock into this property now. But eight years from now, you got a million bucks in equity, roughly. If you stay there 15 years, you got about 1.6 million in equity based off conservative appreciation numbers every single year. Now, let's say in 15 years, you decide to sell. Well, let me show you what the net sheet would look like. So this is a net sheet. So now you click on this. So if you sell in 15 years, based off these numbers, you're selling for roughly 2.5 million. Your balance will be about 870,000 based off what you're paying down. Your taxes that you're paying, um, your closing costs, commissions and stuff like that. Your net at close, you walk away with about $1.5 million in your pocket. So you invested 300,000 of down payment, plus you've, you've paid for the property over the years. And now you're walking away with about 1.5 million if you decide to sell in 15 years. Mr. Client, would that be worth it to you to come up $30,000 more to make this happen? Right. And so what we're getting at guys is now we're not making that logic based, that the emotion based decision, we're making the, the logic based decision, right? Okay, 30 grand, do I have the money? Okay, is it gonna be worth it for me in the long run? Does someone have a question in the chat? Someone said fire. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, questions. Throw some questions, guys. Questions, clarifications. If you go back to the other next sheet, uh, the set, the, yeah. So you got payment costs, so cost. Equity. Equity. Yeah. It's the principal the payment that you pay every month. Yeah. So that's how much you would have paid down in principal, right? So on the junior asked, what does it mean right here on the principal? So principal is what they would have paid their loan down in 15 years, right? Because you're paying interest plus principal. So the principal portion you paid down 329 grand in, in 15 years. Yeah. And then that's the the home is worth 1.5. Uh, no, the home is worth, you started at 1.5. That's what you bought it for, right? And in 15 years, it's worth about 2.5 based off homes going up in this scenario, in this case, example, 3.5% a year. And you only pay 330. I mean, you pay 300,000, which was your down payment, right? That's your down payment. You put 20% down. And then you're making your monthly mortgage payments, right? Whatever their month, monthly mortgage payment is. Part of that is going towards interest. Part of that's going towards principal. So this is how much principal they paid down, right? And then the home appreciated, this is the big one right here. By you, instead of you renting, you now gained a million bucks in value because it went up in value, right? When you go rent a house or rent an apartment, it's not going up in value. In fact, it's just getting more expensive every year because rents are going up with inflation Landlords, they want to keep raising the rents, right? That's how they make money. Instead, you're invested into your own property and you made a, a million bucks worth of appreciation roughly. And did. then you could even, if you click a uh, PDF right here, if you want to have this like in a nice PDF, bam, you just click that and it just breaks it all down. So let's say you want to send this to someone in an email and then there's different templates right here. So this is one version of it. If I click this, it's going to give me a different version. Um, if you're targeting like the buyers who aren't, yeah, it'd be good at an open house. I think it's, it's just good information overall, right? Because it's telling you more about your investment. But I think this is way better when you're consulting someone and you're saying, hey, my job is not just to find you a home. My job is to make sure you make a really good investment, right? Because that's the whole reason we do home ownership, right? Is we want to create our own wealth. So I think this is powerful. It's more powerful when you're consulting someone one-on-one, -on -one. but sure. Like it's, it's a good information, right? Like if you have a buyer walk in and you're showing this and they went to other open houses and they didn't see any of this, then automatically 
it's something for you to talk about. Like, hey, Mr. Buyer, okay, hey, have you guys been looking for a long time? Let's say I'm at an open house. No, we're first time home buyers. Great. Hey, I got some really good information, right? I know there's a lot of information that you're you're learning as you buy a new home. This is a really, really good flyer right here that illustrates the benefits of owning versus renting. You guys currently rent in the area. What do you guys pay roughly a month? Paying about five grand. Okay. Let me draw up the scenario really quick. Or hey, look at let me pull out my my app and let me just do this real quick. Look at by you investing in a property, you're gonna make a million bucks in the next 15 years, right? Versus continuing to rent. Um, has anybody ever went over like the return on investment when you're buying a home? Right. Okay, great. Uh, where can I email this to you? Give me your contact information. Right. You see what I'm doing is I'm providing value to the client at the open house and it's allowing me to now separate myself from other agents. And it's a way for me to now capture that information. And, and now I have that lead. And I promise you, if you have this sort of conversation where you're talking about return on investment, you're talking about the benefits of home ownership, all that different stuff you are separating yourself from the other agents who are just there to host an open house and, Hey, go ahead and just sign in. Right. That's what most people are doing. You know? So the more that you know this, like you can now make your conversations a lot higher level when you're talking to buyers and when you're higher level, that creates more authority for you, right? That creates more credibility for you when you're talking to these clients you're not just the, even if you're new, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're brand new or you're, you're newer to the business, you could just study this stuff and learn it, learn how to explain it. And now you can have some really higher level intelligent conversations with, you know, buyers who are maybe first time home buyers, maybe uh, engineer types, people who are, are looking for direction, right? And they're looking for leadership. This is a perfect way to, to build that credibility. All right. What other questions you guys got? So 3.5 is going to be the default, right? Because if you look at the history of real estate, we could even like Google this, like history uh, or appreciation history of real estate. You also have something like right? Yeah. So check this out for California. Um, average annual appreciation rate of 6.4% from 1992 to 2023, right? Um, historical appreciation from 1987 to 2023 was 4.8, right? And that's taking like the whole nation, right? But we know California and especially the, the Silicon Valley is its whole other bubble, right? So we can even say uh, appreciation history of real estate in Silicon Valley Yeah, it's not breaking Silicon Valley. Um, 6.5 is what it's showing here. So it's okay for you to go in here and like change that number, right? And so the assumptions, you could say, hey, look at by default, because Chicago title is, is in different areas, they have a 3.5%. That's really conservative, right? You're buying in like a prime area. So I would say you're probably going to be like double that, right? Especially in Mountain View, even on the ups and downs, right? You're probably like more like a six and a half, seven. Mr. Customer, would you agree? Like these, this area goes up higher than like other areas. Yes, I would agree. Okay. Let's just use 7%, right? And then that's where you can guide them right to those numbers. And then of course, the higher the appreciation, um, <laughs> the more that they're going to gain in equity, right? Does anybody know what the rule of 72 is? Anybody ever heard of that? Oh, this is a good one. Rule of 72. 72. So the rule of 72 in simple terms, it's an easy way to calculate how long it's going to take for your money to double. So you just take 72 and you divide it by whatever rate of return you're getting. And that's how many years it takes for your investment to double. Right. So if you have the number and you could even use this with like, okay, if I put my money in the bank and I'm getting 4% interest, how long will it take for my money to double just with, with interest, compound interest, right? So if you say, okay, um, 
the rate of return, we saw the appreciation was six and a half percent. So you go 72 divided by 6.5. It's going to be about 11 years at six and a half percent before my investment doubles. Right. So if I bought a home for a million in about 11 years, it's going to go to two million. Right. And that's a quick way to calculate return. Right. The rule of 72. And so that applies to just any like compound interest. Um, now I'm going to go to the, uh, MLS stats. That's another thing where I can show you guys. Um, uh, let's see here in the matrix. So when you log into MLS, you go to matrix and then you hit stats. And right here is where you can punch in different criteria. Um, this will allow you to maybe zero in a little bit more, um, on stuff, but you just got to know how to use this tool. So like a good thing to, to look at is like, um, sales prices over time. So let's say I want to look at what's the sales price over time. And I just click on that one. And then I want to look in a certain area. So we were looking at Sunnyvale, right? And then I only want to look at residential properties and I only want to look at single family homes. Uh, what was that? Oh, uh, I don't know. You can't. I don't know if you. No, I think it's just going to give you, um, just the history. So then you click on generate, and now it's going to give me data. I think this one only goes back like a year. I don't know if it's going to go back further than that. But this is a good stat to use when clients are on the fence, right? Because you can also show them where the prices are headed. So, hey, look, Mr. Customer, in Sunnyvale, single family homes, if we go back a year, you know, in April, the average home was uh, 2,200,000, right? If we go today, the average home is $2.8 million. And that's just in the last 12 months, right? For single family homes in Sunnyvale. Um, so you can show them, yes, there's been some ups, yes, there's been some downs, but you can see that homes have went from 2.2 the same time last year to 2.8, right? Um, and that's a good way to show people like where the market is headed. Another one that you can do is you can do average days on market and sales to list price ratio. So if I click on that one and then I hit generate, the chart basically is the graph. If you wanna look at this graph thing or you just click data and then it'll just give you the numbers. So you can show someone like, hey, in the last couple months from November till now, homes were selling about 9%, almost 10% over asking, right? In December, it was about 7% over asking. In January, 7.2%. Now we're back in February, 9.8% again. So Mr. Customer, where do you think the market is headed? Shelly, where do you think the market's headed? It's going great. Is, is it going up or down? Yeah. Okay, so right now, I know what I'm just this, this is Dan's scenario. I know we're we're stuck on, hey, I don't want to pay $30,000 more. But based off the data that I'm showing you, do you think the homes are going to be more expensive or less expensive a couple weeks from now or a couple months from now? The interest rates go down. Obviously, the prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. But let's just, just, just looking at the data right here, right? If in December, they were going about 6.8% over the asking price, January, 7.2% over the asking price. Yeah, it's going to go up. Though. It's going to go up, right? So this same home, right? If we're looking at it, it's gone about 1% to 2% more each month over asking price, right? So by next month, it might be going like 11% over the asking price, right? So 2% on 1.5 million, let's say we wait and we don't get another home for a month from now, I go 1.5 million times 2%. How much is that? That's 30,000, right? And that's what they're asking us to come up right now. So if we wait, you know, let's say we turn this home down that you really like, and we go back out and shop and it takes us a few more weeks and we finally get another home a month from now, this same home based off where the market is headed would cost $30,000 more. I like that. There you go. Right. I like how you elaborated on that, right? That's going to be the new standard that is set 
So now all the other homes that are coming for sale, they're basing it off of this new standard and then it's gonna go up from there, right? So Mr. Customer, I know you're stuck on this 30,000. We looked at the rent versus own. We see that it's in the long run, this is a great investment. I'm looking at the stats of where the market's headed every single month. Do you think it's probably worth it for you to just go ahead and move forward with the 30,000 and lock in right now before the prices go up and start gaining that equity over the next 10 to 15 years, right? So that's how you have the conversation, right? Um, and here's the thing, is that gonna guarantee that they're gonna move forward? No, but do you have a way better shot of getting them to move forward by running them through all the numbers and look and treating it like an investment and showing them data, right? Do you have a way better shot of getting them to move forward like this or just kind of, hey, this is the counter offer. What do you guys think? How do you feel about it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what's you know what's a good a good uh thing you can do also to really drive the point home is you can also tell stories right so let's say you have clients that you were working with in the past right and we, we all have those leads that we were talking to six months ago a year ago and now and they kind of ghosted you or they took some time off and then now they're getting back into the market and now you're helping them again and you could tell them like, hey, I have a customer that I was talking to last year. They didn't want to move forward at that time. They had some things they had to work on or they didn't feel the timing was right. And now it's six months later. And now we're actually looking at homes. If I look back six months, you know, back in August, homes were going 6.8%, right? Over the asking. Now today they're going 10% or more over the asking, right? So they waited six months and now they're paying more for that same home. Um, if I show you the sales prices over time, Back in August, the average price in Sunnyvale was 2.1. Now here we are in March, the average price is 2.8. So it costs them a lot of money by waiting, right? And what I don't want, Shelly, is like, you know, I don't want you to wait. And then like in a couple months, you're like, we're regretting it. Like, hey, we lost this home over 30 grand, right? And now the homes are way more. And now it's out of reach. It's out of my budget, right? So... Do you think we should move forward, Shelly? Sure. Let's move forward. Let's go ahead and let's get you your home. Let's get you your keys to your property. And that's how you close the deal, right? It's not like hard closing. It's not like convincing. It's showing them the numbers and then guiding them. Hey, what do you think? Based off what I've shown you, do you think it would make sense to invest your money, right? Because really what you're asking when they counter offer you 30 grand more is you're asking them to invest $30,000 more into their, their home, right? And so when you start using words like that, hey, does it make sense to invest more money into this property? That's going to be a long-term asset for you, right? All right, who wants to come up here and practice? Well, no, let me do this. Let's break up into groups because just putting you on the spot is going to be a little harder. What I want you guys to do um, is break up it's just into groups of two. And I want you guys just to practice like going over this type of stuff, right? And what I'm gonna pull up is this calculator right here. And we'll just run run this scenario, right? So they're paying 5,000 in rent. Their home price is 1.5 that they're looking to buy. 6.5, we're looking at a 7% appreciation. They told you like, hey, we're gonna keep this home at least 10 to 15 years. So I'm gonna put this on 15 years. And all I want you to do is just explain the numbers, right? Like you just got countered $50,000 more. Okay. That's the scenario. You just got countered $50,000 more. They're not sure. They're filling the squeeze, right? So you're going to start off with, Hey, look, Hey, look at the seller just came back with $50,000 more. I think we should really study this investment and see if it makes sense. That's what I want you to open with. Seller just countered us $50,000 more. I think we should study this and see if it makes sense to invest more money into this property. Here's what, I, here's what we're looking at here, right? In 15 years, based off my calculations, and you're pretending you're in front of them, right? It looks like in 15 years, you're actually going to be positive about $2 million uh, 
on this property compared to you continuing to rent and pay $5,000 a month and rent is going up every single year, right? Your rent costs are gonna be about 1.1 million over the next 15 years if you just stay renting. And your buy costs are gonna be, I don't see how that's negative. Why is that negative? Oh, the reason it's negative guys is because if it's going up 7% a year in, in 15 years, it doubled like a couple times, right? The house is worth 3.2 mil if it continues to do 7% a year. Because remember with the rule of 72, um, yeah, so it's, it's more than doubled, which is why now it's like all day it makes sense for you to buy. But what you want to just explain is that they're going to be better off buying because they're going to be positive 2 million bucks, right? By the time you factor in your appreciation, uh, if you want, I could pull up this equity thing right here. If that's easier for you guys to explain. 3.2 million in equity. Total equity after 15 years. Okay, so let's break up in the groups, pair up with someone. Right. And let's just practice. Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I want what I want you guys to do is practice having these conversations. We just heard back from the listing agent. The listing agent is asking us to come up fifty thousand dollars. I think we should study the data and see if it makes sense. Right. That's how you open the conversation up. Appreciation, yeah. <laughs> And so when the most that we sit here and we also gave it all that Yo, brother. Rika. <laughs> Hey, uh, real quick, man. What's up, bro? I'm playing around with the calculator on the phone. Um, I may have missed this part, bro, but the break-even point, what exactly, like, is that, the break-even point? So the break-even point, so when you go to costs, let me see. That basically means it's comparing, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think break even is about like three years. Let me recompute this. Hold on. No, no, no. I know, but break even from what? Like from their down payment, from from like break even when you hit when you hit this learn more, you click on that, it breaks it all down. So it takes it takes into account how much they put out of pocket with down payment, what mortgage payments, what maintenance, how much how much equity they gain, how much tax savings, and then it, it gives them a net. Uh, that's pretty there clean. you go that's pretty clean that's like on the spot bro yeah that's i mean the the mls data is cool but but this is like dope because we could be there at a property like and like hey check this out you know what i mean yeah that's that's pretty badass yeah no i like it man I, I was playing around with it earlier man it's pretty there's other calculators on this thing too or like even for flips there's a flip calculator to see about yeah, flipping see, homes you plug all that in. Yeah, bro. It's... Someone asked so about the. Years. 
Somebody asked about the negative. What is what was that negative that you were talking about? I cut you off when you were talking about that. Yeah, the negative. Um, the negative is because you gain so much equity mm. that it's not costing you anything at that point. You actually, that's all the gain. It just becomes cheaper in the long run because you gain so much equity. The appreciation is what really went up 2.6 mil in appreciation. So that's why in, um, it's like three years or something is your break even point. But yeah, I'd say play around with it and click on those little buttons to learn more and like let it break it all down. And there's even a video. So if you click on this video, rent versus buy, there's a little play button. That's actually a video explaining this whole entire tool. It's a YouTube video. Oh, bro, that's pretty sick too. You choose the you choose the buy you put in the buyer's income. Yeah, and it's it based off their income bracket. It'll tell them how much tax savings they have. Oh shoot, I didn't even know that. So let's say they make like three hundred thousand or something. Oh yeah. If I recompute those numbers. It factors that into the taxes, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you're paying more taxes and you're the higher income bracket you're in. Right. Right. So it's a bigger write-off, it's a bigger savings if you make more money. Yeah. Uh, I like that. That's pretty cool. What's cool too is the net sheet. Yeah. Bro. Like, hey, even if you only kept this year this house for three years or whatever, this is how much you walk away with when you sell. Even right? somebody you, that is even thinking about retiring years. in the next five years, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's still, that's still like a good depending on where they're buying, right? Yeah, if you sell in 10 years, you're gonna walk away with about 1.8 mil. Wow, in profit, you know, after you pay your loan down, your down payment, plus all the appreciation that you made. Yeah, this really breaks all the numbers down for them. Okay, guys, who uh, who feels solid on this? Who feels like I'm? I'm not expecting you guys to be experts, but who feels like uh, they can handle this type of conversation with the client? <laughs> I heard Cynthia, she did a good job. Uh, Maori, raise his hand. Why don't you come up here, Maori? Come show us how it's done real quick. We'll do a little role play. So we're gonna keep it really simple, guys. Um, what I recommend too, is you go into this app and you just play around with it. I explained it as best as I could, but if you click this play button right here, a video pops up. There's actually a, a three minute video that explains the whole app. Um, and probably explains it better than I can. 
And so I would, so if you ever want to go back, like, Hey, I forgot, how does this work? Or what does this mean? Just go click on that video. Uh, let's see. And then the other thing too, is when you click on some of these tabs, click on these little learn mores. When you click on the learn more, it pops up how they came up with those numbers. And you could even do that on your phone too. Like the cost, if the client's like, well, how are you coming up with that number? Bam, just, and when you do it on your phone, it pops up on your phone like that too. Okay, Maudi, um, same scenario. I right? would just do a little sample scenario, right? You're gonna, you're, you're getting back to me. Opening line should be like, hey, Enrique, I just heard back from the, the listing agent. They're countering us to $50,000 more. Uh, before we make a decision, I think we should study this this investment and see uh, you know, see what it looks like basically in the future for you on this property. All right. I'll be honest, but also many an offer while we're doing this. Okay, well you raise your hand. All right, that's it. Who else thinks they could do it? You don't have to do it. Cynthia could do it. Cynthia, come up here, Cynthia. You did it, you did a good job. I heard you, I heard you over there. Oh, Cynthia. <laughs> Oh, let's go, let's go. Um, okay, Enrique, so I just heard back from the listing agent and we got countered uh, to come up 50,000 for more. How do you feel about that? Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, definitely something I got to think over. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I thought you were going to say. So I wanted to go ahead and make this a little bit more simpler. So I wanted us to give uh, more hard facts on what's going to happen if you do invest these $50,000 into this property. I know you said you really like this property. So I wouldn't want us to pass over an opportunity um, with without us knowing the, the background or what can happen in the future. Um, so... Uh, this is a little something that I pulled up. So I know you said you were uh, wanting to stay in the property within the next like 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit, can you go to Edward? Yeah. So this is a, a average breakdown of what would happen if we did invest the $50,000. So as you see right here, this is the down payment that we're going to have to, uh, that you're wanting to put the uh, 300,000, the 20%. Mm -hmm. And within the next 15 years, you are uh, averaging in a 2.6 uh, appreciation, a 2.6 million appreciation. Um, how do you feel about that? Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, how are you coming up with 2.6? So, uh, we're so for the average appreciation uh historically uh for the homes in california the average appreciation is seven percent um year to year so that's what i plugged in uh those numbers in here and that estimated a uh, average appreciation of 2.6 million wow so in 15 years about 2.6 million yeah that you were gonna gain uh that you're gaining that's not including your down payment and um your principal. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and um, and if you go to uh, Matrix, I like the Matrix. Which one? Matrix. Uh, MLB. oh, okay. If you go over here, here's the sales average price that uh, we've been seeing in the last months. So let's say we we passed this house. Um, before this, we saw that there was a uh, in let's say December, there was a, a 6%, uh, the sales price was going 6% over the listing price, right? So um, if you do that calculation and now we're going over at 8%, um, that's a 2% gain within the next the, the last uh, two months. So say we do wait out the, we pass on this house, we wait a couple of weeks or a couple of months to uh, get find another home that you really like, um, it seemed to me that the that the percentage is going up um, or the competition is going up. So that that percentage is about the 40,000, 50,000 that we're trying to invest. So in back in August or back in December, we were at 6% and now we're at 8% or at oh, 9%. Right. So if you do the calculations within the, the last two months that's the forty thousand dollars so if we do wait another 42 months um we'll have 
to go ahead and still compete with those forty thousand dollars. So the, after everything closes, all the cells have closed uh, in let's say a couple of weeks. That's going to be the new standard that we're going to be having now. So um, and say we keep going up with the with the current market that's seeming to go up. Say let's just do ten percent. So we're going to have to go ten percent above that standard. So we'll overall we're going to have to invest those fifty thousand dollars so it's just your choice if you want to invest it now or later on and then i also did get our lender on the line so you can see the payment difference between um the 5.5 and the five point the fifty thousand dollar difference got it so what do you what do you think i should do um i can't really tell you what you should do um this is why i wanted you to get get the data so you have enough time to process everything and then we can make a decision. Okay, well, we're gonna pause the role play. So what I would say is, what I advise you to do, mm -hmm. right? If you can afford it, mm -hmm. if this is the home you really like, if you have the money, the data is telling us that this is a really good investment, okay. I would advise you to move forward with it if all those things make sense and it checks the boxes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm okay. pausing up, don't. So what I would advise you to do? So I'll, what I would advise you to do if, um, if everything makes sense, if you're able to afford it, the data is seeming to me that it's a pretty good investment. Uh, uh, you said that this home checks all the boxes. It's close to your work. You like the layout. There's not really much work that you have to do. I know you were wanting to not, not put in more work. It's turnkey. So I think if you really like it and you can afford it, I think we should move forward. All right, Cynthia, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go. Let's go. Crush it. All right, guys, feedback. Give Cynthia some feedback, guys. Good job, Cynthia. That was dope. Yeah. But it was real, right? Like, you know, she obviously she's coming up here in front of everyone. She's on the spot. But it was like, it was real, right? She didn't sound like she was pressuring me. She didn't sound, you know, it was a real conversation. Um, I really liked it. What else did you guys like about her combo? fact that she relied on a couple different sources to arrive as to why they should have right? yeah. MLS. Uh, yep. She used the MLS. She pointed back to the MLS with the trends of the market. She talked about the equity. She talked about the lender, right? The lender, I spoke to them or whatever, or they're on standby or they already said, you know, do you qualify for this? Uh, that was really, really good. I also like the little you said, uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's like you're not like the people are to blame people for like if they're not happy. And so like if she were to tell him like this is what you should do, like later on maybe whatever for whatever reason they regret the decision that they might just target her like you told us to do this. Yeah. You know? Um so I thought that was nice. Yeah, and so the I prompted her to use the what I advise you to do, right? Because that's like, hey, I'm your advisor, I'm your consultant, I'm helping you figure it out. I'm not making the decision. I advise you to move forward if this, this, and that. Now, if those are the three things make sense for you, then this the numbers are showing us that this is going to be a great investment for you guys over the long run, right? And then at that point, I was like, dude, I'm sold, right? Now I went from like, oh, shoot, I'm nervous. And she helped me like calm down and like really look at this from a, a logical standpoint, from an investment standpoint. I'm like, yeah, dude, the numbers don't lie. I can't afford it. I like the house. It's close to my work. It doesn't need repairs. I have the money. And in the long run, I'm looking at freaking three million bucks in equity. And it's not like we're having to put forward or we also have a down payment. How does that work? So if we're going up, does the down payment change? So you're all, that's the thing. And that's that's a good point that you brought up, right? You're only putting a percentage of how much you go up. So if you go up 50 grand and you're putting up, you're putting 20% down, you're putting 20% of 50,000, which is only $10,000 more out of pocket, mm -hmm. right? So that's actually a really good point to remind them, right? I didn't even think of that. Sure. Um, because you're you're since you're putting twenty percent down of the whole price, right? So if your price is one point five, twenty percent is three hundred thousand. If you go up fifty grand more, twenty percent of the additional fifty grand is only ten thousand dollars more, right? So now instead of three hundred thousand, you're putting three hundred and ten thousand dollars down because you're financing eighty percent of it, right? So it's not fifty grand out of pocket; it's ten grand out of pocket. The rest is being added to my loan. Does that make sense? Right. So you, you always tell them, hey, since you are using financing and you're only you're putting 20% down, 
you're actually only going to put out of pocket 20% of the additional 50,000, right? So that's another selling point where, right? Some people think, here's the thing is like, some people don't realize that when they get the counter, they just think 50 grand, I got to come up with 50 grand, right? They don't, they kind of forget because they just get caught up in the emotions, right? And that's where we got to take them out of emotion, break it down for them, and then show them what logic, show them what payments and make it all make sense for them, right? Good stuff. Any other uh, questions, comments, feedback for Cynthia? Let's give it up one more time for Cynthia. So here's your guys' homework, guys. Your guys' homework is to, number one, download this app. Raise your hand if you don't have this app currently downloaded on your phone. Okay. So if you don't have it downloaded, guys, you have to download this app. The only way you're going to get good at this is by opening the app and playing around with it. That's the only way you're going to get good, right? You've got to open it up, play around with it. When you go into the app, you go to calculators, and then you just go to rent versus buy calculator. And just go in there and just start plugging away, guys. Plug the different scenarios, right? Think of real-life scenarios. Like, think of like, all right, a house in Blossom Valley. What does it rent for? What does it sell for, right? And just start plugging the scenarios in there. Play with the, the little, uh, the different tabs. That's the way you're going to get good at it. If you get stuck, just hit play and watch the video that explains how to do it, right? Because you don't want, what you don't want is you don't want to meet with the client and be fumbling in front of the client, right? I fumbled a little bit, right? I studied it earlier, but I'm still not an expert in it, to be honest. So a couple more times and I'll be, I'll be good. Um, but you don't want to fumble in front of the client, right? You want to be able to come, a big part of this is coming through with confidence, right? Like, hey, like I know my stuff. Let me give you the information. And then that's going to give the client confidence in wanting to work with you and wanting to move forward, right? So that's your guys' homework is going there. And then the same way that Cynthia, that we did role play, you're not going to master it on the first try either, right? So once you do that, I would buddy up with each other and just practice saying these things. Just you practice it. Yeah. Pick someone. So yeah, let's maybe take some action. Pick the person next to you or whoever you role played with and just pick a time like, hey, when are you and I going to just, we'll do a quick little role play again, yeah. right? Because you got to do it a few times, guys, so you can master it, right? And then you go out there because you guys are in these scenarios right now. You guys are showing homes. Many of you guys are writing offers. And now you're at that situation where you're getting countered, right? And this right here is what's going to stop you from increasing your conversion, right? Getting these buyers who are on the fence or they're at that counter stage and they're not sure. This right here is what's going to give you the ammunition to help them move forward and help them make an educated decision as well, right? And if the numbers don't make sense, guys, that's the other thing too, is this also is going to tell you if it doesn't make sense. If you run through this exercise and they're like, hey, you know what? It just doesn't make sense for me. I can't afford the payment, right? Then, hey, then I advise maybe let's go look at something a little bit cheaper. Let's go something, go look at something within our budget. Let me run the scenario on maybe a different neighborhood. Let me give you some other options. And now what you're doing is now you're being that consultant. Now you're being that advisor. You're not just trying to slam them and close them on one deal. You're trying to look out for what's best for the client, right? And that's why at the end is, hey, if you can afford it, if you really like this home, if this is the neighborhood, if this home checks most of the boxes, if this is where you see yourself and all those things make sense, I advise you to move forward because the data is showing us that this is going to be a great investment in the long run. Now, if you're going to, if you're only going to keep this home for two years, well, we already know like in the first couple of years, it's cheaper to rent. Right. But you're telling me like, hey, if, if, if you're going to drop this kind of money, you're going to be there for 10, 15 years at least. Right. So let's let's go through a real hypothetical scenario. All right. And that's where you got to advise people. Right. On 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 what makes sense based off the data. Cool, guys. That's all I got for you. Hope you guys got some value today, guys. Let's go out there and get it.